Good morning, everybody. Oh, pleasant day here in Mangalore. And I would like to welcome uh, the speaker for the day, Mr. Praveen Kamar. We've been hearing a lot about COVID, normal, the next normal. Uh, I thought it was time for us to know also how do we look at preparing ourselves in these challenging times. And then very apt, um, a very apt title for this program called, called Challenging Times and our preparedness for that. Sir, I welcome you heartily. I will give a quick round of uh, introduction. Mr. Praveen Kamath has been associated with us for quite some time. It's not new that we know him. Uh, and Wipro being one of our esteemed recruitment partners as well. Mr. Praveen Kamath is currently the general manager and head of HR of Wipro, the global delivery and enabling enabling center there. Uh, he, he, he has experience on a global parameter, so I don't want to say only India. He is responsible for global operations as well. Uh, being associated with us, have done a couple of workshops for our faculties. Uh, we've done an MTP for our departments, and I'm not talking about the outside, but it's more relevant, I think, to speak about what we've done for our institution. And uh, today you could get to hear uh, you know, what is it that's going on in the industry, how do you think we are going to look at preparing ourselves and taking it forward from there? This, this webinar is organized jointly by the Department of Training and Placement and Industry Innovation Group. I also welcome Satyendra Sir, the chairperson for the Industry Innovation Group, and also Rajesh Sir, who is helping us host this event. I hope to see you students uh, joining in big numbers. We have only about 50 odd participants. Please ask your people to join it. We are ready to start the session. Praveen sir, all over to you, and you can go ahead with the session there. Thank you. Thank you, Sangeeta, ma'am. And uh, thank you, uh, SDAC, for giving me this opportunity. Every time I come to Mangalore or I make a dedicated visit to SDAC, it's been a pleasure to interact with um, your management, your leadership team, your uh, HODs, your staff members, as well as my dear students. Um, the reason why uh, I chose this topic, uh, a, I think many of us have heard, known, felt the realities of how this global pandemic has spanned uh, for the last four months. Uh, how does this going to help or pan out in the next three to four months or even six months uh, from both as a student belonging to a college of repute, how as a student, uh, as a sincere child of your parents, and how you as a fellow professional of the future should prepare oneself. Now, most of this, what I'm going to share, may be known to you, or you may have to reinforce this in real actions. That's the only time you will be able to fulfill the desire and the need to A, come over this kind of a situation, B, our preparedness for the future, as well as C, what are those methodologies, learnabilities we should put in place so that you don't waste your time and make this golden opportunity as students of a professional course. I think why most of us do understand whether it is work from a standpoint of being in a college as a student, as a professor working for a good college, or as a professional working for a large organization, over a period of 
time, I think the meaning of work, or the meaning of what I want to achieve in life has significantly changed. If you talk to your grandparents and your parents, largely they work for sustenance, to take care of the families, to take care of their extended family, which is joint family. They work towards making sure the livelihood is met. Thereby, fulfilling the need of sustaining their life. For a period of last 25, 30 years, the parents have changed their attribute towards this particular fact. And they, they wanted to see their children, their grandchildren, and they, and they themselves satisfied with what they want. So the satisfaction factor along with sustenance draw them in life. They give good education to their children. They put you in nine places, both, both from a primary school to high school to your plus two to your engineering college. Or there are parents of your generation identified these children to be well settled in life in terms of career, in terms of marriages, in terms of looking after the grandchildren. I think they, besides being fulfilled with respect to working for or working with their, their own business or working for a bank or a hospital or a college or a school or a corporation, they also make sure the next generation is satisfied. Then came the era of most of you. I don't qualify to belong to that uh, uh, era. This particular era where all of you are belong to, besides having sustenance and satisfaction, you would like to identify yourself, maybe with a specialization, maybe with a skill, Maybe with a qualification, maybe with a good brand or a company to work for, maybe with a brand which you carry with you, could be a phone to bicycle to a scooter to a bike. I think a lot of things changed in building identity, both from an intrinsic skill perspective and also Identity from a standpoint of expectation. So given the fact that today, it's not only sustenance you, your parents looked after you, they also got satisfied, but you had a strong desire to do a professional degree and a particular specialization and you identified yourself today, not only with a professional degree, but also to equip yourself with those skills, which are so-called latest and greatest. Having said that, when you changed yourself from sustenance to identity, even the world changed. Even the world changed. The world moved in terms of technology big time, you saw phenomenal changes in technology in the last uh, 10 years. Uh, expectation around the way human beings live got changed. Expectation around what is that I should contribute to the world of change have changed. As well as your ability to contribute in small or medium size or big time contribution to all these also evolved. Now, you may not be able to agree and relate to this talk because it has come to you automatically. Let me tell you, all of you sitting in this room today for this guest lecture session, I call you as digital native. For you, when you're born, when you become, uh, uh, when you passed out from your high school, Living with a mobile and Google is part of your life. So you all become digitally native. While 
all of us, uh, whether it is Sangeeta ma'am, me or Satendra or your principal or your directors of the college, we all belong to an era wherein we have to learn these digital skills to be where we are. The expectation around skill also got changed in the, in the last few years. Your ability to learn how to cook a special pasta that evening by opening a YouTube channel is seamless for you. How do I make an Italian dish today evening? Is a click away. How do I make sure I can build a model of a bike by going through certain courses on Coursera or uh, some learning management platform of a of a testing class for an university has become relatively easier. Or learning about asteroids or astronomy is again a click away. Your ability to relate to someone both in person uh, by listening to him, seeing that person uh, at a given point in time has become that much seamless. So learning has become that much easier and we have really become a global village in terms of reaching out to people, relating to people, touching a skill, modifying something new, relating to something which is innovative, starting something on your own by not depending on too many people. So I think there is huge amount of change which has brought about in the landscape of workforce, in the landscape of our future of work, when you pass out from your college. You might be wondering why I'm giving you these insights. Many times in my last four months during uh, the lockdown session, uh, my sessions on during the lockdown, uh, with a lot of colleges, students, teachers, professors, administrators, uh, company employees. I got this question from the group saying that, sir, what could be the change you will see pre-COVID to post-COVID? I must admit, for most of the industries which are depending on customer being there in present, uh, customer being there in their physical presence has really made an impact for students, teachers, professors, and some of the IT folks and uh, IDES folks. The world has changed, not much changed to an extent or the degree in which the world has changed for, say, the automobile industry or a manufacturing industry or a retail industry or a real estate industry. For us, this particular time has helped us to redefine our way of approach, but not so much the way of our living. Primarily because after a few months, which is one or two months, we could relate to our teachers and our universities and our colleges. We could you know, browse the same uh, uh, college curriculum, lesson plans, or uh, our tools and techniques to learning a product or service. Our ability to relate to many people in the ecosystem, whether it is parents, teachers, professors, relatives, industry people, have not changed much because we could still relate through mobility global mobility, which is through your phones, through your video calls, there were enough and more tools which were available. So please be rest assured that this particular time and the next six months for all of you, and to all of you, some of you belong to second year, some of you belong to third year engineering classes. For you, the change has not happened much, both from a standpoint of your approach or from a standpoint of what you should learn pre-COVID or post-COVID. The changes in the landscape have happened in the startups, in the mid-sized organization, who felt strong or severe 
financial crunches, thereby right sizing the organization, letting go of people, a uh, uh, lot of employees who are expensive stand for, uh, from a standpoint of salary have to let go of their jobs. Well, that has happened. Most of the large organizations which are financially strong were able to survive through the thick and thin of uh, uh, COVID-19. It doesn't mean they have not been impacted. There is a significant impact both in terms of their revenue and margins. But survival was not an issue for most of the large cash-rich organization. Now, how they are going to relate it to what you do, what your college does. It's important to know that these are the large employers whom you get employed with. will still continue to be coming to your campus, hiring you, identifying people, uh, identifying the next year students, uh, you know, doing all kinds of uh, recruitment strategies needs to be done, will continue. For example, none of the large organizations have withdrawn their offer letters given to employees, uh, sorry, students. Yeah, while they have delayed the decision by a quarter or two, Hardly any large corporations have denied the offer which has been given to employees, uh, students. Likewise, for students passing out next year, there could be a change in the format of assessment through online modules sitting at home, through uh, a methodology wherein uh, people can take assessment online. But the onboarding of these students will happen in the month of May, June, July next year. So to that extent, there is no impact for some of you who belong to second year and third year. In fact, I go one step further to tell you the companies which are startups in mid size organization might have to experiment with a lot of youngsters like you, thereby reducing their total number of laterals who are going to join. Laterals means people with experience, people will, who will come with certain kind of expertise. They might take a delayed decision to onboard such people at the cost of hiring a lot of freshers from the colleges. Thereby, by the time they pick up their speed in terms of their ability to make money, startups and mid-size organization, that is equivalent to the learning curve each one of you can bring in. So they are willing to take that experimentation in the days to come. So my suggestion to students has been, while we continue to see there is no drastic change in the skill landscape which you can learn, your ability to leverage that opportunity with small timer organization is fairly large to that extent. You may have to relate to them by talking to your friends, your seniors, your last years, your last 10 years alums, get the list from the college, talk to each one of them, talk to your uncles and aunts, or talk to that particular student who's done doing its be well in the industry. You should build your network during this time to keep in touch with such people to do a, a free of cost project for them sitting from home or something which they are doing, helping them buy additional resources, additional skill set, additional inputs, which you can give them being at home. I call them as hobby projects. I call them as uh, projects which may not fetch you money. It can fetch you a lot of experience. It can fetch you a lot many times and in the minds of those people for finding it hard to employ people, but they can leverage those students to fulfill the need of their customer. Thereby, when you pass out, consist that you might be the first person to be identified as the person to come and work for that particular company. I still remember as a student when I could not afford my two meals a day for close to five years, after my college hours, I used to go and work as a um, 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 
Kyoshi teacher. I used to go and work uh, selling the natural therapy books. And I used to go and work. Um, uh, I don't know whether you know this company called CPC lorries and buses in Mangalore. And Mr. Kudwa used to allow me to come in the evening hours just to draft domestic inquiries, just to draft uh, uh, the show cause notices, uh, draft uh, new policies and framework. Thereby, over a period of two years, when I used to go there for two hours in the evening, he is the first person to give me an offer while I got a campus hiring done from my campus when I passed out from, which is Roshni Nilaya. What I'm trying to impress here, not to be pompous in this conversation, I just want to make sure that you are able to impress on people who are in need, both in the industry or at an entrepreneurial level, or someone who has started a startup and who is struggling to survive through the thick and uh, 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 tough times of COVID. If you come handy in terms of giving them the support as a student, your ability to have their ability to have you as a first train call will be a true reality. So you may have to do some of these initiatives by yourself. Thrive on networking with people. Thrive on people whom you know. Thrive on students who have passed out. Thrive on uh, uh, the, uh, the uncles and aunts whom you know. So I think your ability to build that network. Uh, network is very, very important, not wasting four and a half hours on your cell phone. Use your cell phone for taking advantage of networking, thereby helping yourself to skill up, thereby having uh, a portfolio of yours, which will be a first recall for these futuristically employable employers. Having said that, um, I will certainly tell you You can't be ignoring your academic excellence. The first thing any employer, any recruiter who comes to your campus, the first observation or first identity of yourself will be identifying the employer or the recruiter by looking at your career profile or your resume. After that, only I get an opportunity to see you. That's why my, uh, my advice to all the students all the time, including my own daughter, has been before you present your case in front of someone, be it an audio or, or in person, the only way to shortlist or longlist your profile will be what kind of the scores which you have scored. Academic excellence is directly proportional to hard work which you put in. Academic excellence is also directly proportional to your intelligence. Academic excellence also talks a lot about your talent. Followed by your ability to showcase the so-called co-curricular or extracurricular activities. It is not at the cost of each other. Many times, students, teachers, professors, and parents sometimes have this myth in their mind that if somebody is good at something else, he need not have to focus on academics. And this is what I learned in my life. And I've implemented that in my journey of life, even now. For me and for you also, there should not be a plan A and a plan B. You should have only plan A's. You should have multi-level plan A's. You should not have anything to fall back on. You should fall forward. You should not have anything to fall back on. You should fall forward by multi-skilling yourself by identifying yourself with those resourcefulness which you need to pick up. Now, what are those? 
There are courses on Coursera, there are courses on Udemy, there are tons of LMSs, there are data science courses online, there are data analytics courses available for you, there are programming skills, there are coding skills. Are you utilizing your time to make use of those skill set from a basic level to an expert level? You know, some of the engineering students say, I'm not from an IT background, why should or how should I learn coding skills or programming skills or development skills as a developer? Now, if you are, your objective is to get into an IT company, there is no negotiation about not knowing coding skills or programming skills. If you want to uh, do your super specialization of mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, EMC, what is that you have attempted in the last six months by being at home? Because your class hours, your college hours is just about five hours or six hours. Rest of the 24 hours, if you eliminate eight hours of sleep, you should ask a question, how do you leverage your ownership of that eight hours? Or nine hours or additionally 10 hours available for you? Other than sleep and college. That's why I always request students, other than these online courses which are available for any of the specialization which you belong to, there are enough and more engineering colleges in the world who have done a lot of paper presentation. Have you gone to their website and seen their paper presentation in your area of specialization? Your specialization. Have you looked at papers presented by professors in the best in class universities in the world? Have you taken up a project by yourself, experimenting uh, by looking at those YouTube videos, those um, learning management platforms which has been uh, identified by that university or that college or that startup? How many times you have used Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn? to relate to such opportunities, not by being pompous on the, uh, the social media, uh, uh, which is available for you. How many times you've gone uh, to Amazon to buy a book, not to buy a cell phone? How many times you've certified yourself on a new technology, new skill in the last six months? Now, whether it is pre-COVID or post-COVID, doesn't matter. The good news is, I always said this. I always said this. COVID situation and being at home helped us to define our time or veil out our time. The choice was completely with you, not with your college, not with your professor, not with your parents. And you have another six months to go, let me tell you. You'll have another six months to go before vaccination comes to this, uh, this kind of a problem. What did I do? Let me tell you, my last 18 months went in, you know, reading these books, 18 months. And the entire speed of reading increased by virtue of, you know, pointing out time in my day-to-day -day life, otherwise would have wasted in terms of travel, in terms of coffee breaks, in terms of spoiling my uh, um, uh, time with uh, so-called uh, professional colleagues doing nothing. Today, I was able to do my job. I continue to do it. There is nothing wrong in keeping a book besides you when you're bored with some subject, some uh, uh, some projects which you do. Uh, you can read a book. Okay, you are not used to read a book. Take Google and download some other technical uh, courses which are available. Read them. So I think you should have end-to-end -end responsibility of your life while continuing to believe that you might do or there could be multiple plan A's for you to pursue in the future. Now, which means the people, the students who are the best in class in academics, who have the great work, ability to work hard, able to score well, should supplement with all these activities which I just mentioned. Followed by 
followed by your ability to know who does the maximum depth from you? Who does the maximum depth from you? Who are the thieves in your life? Your thieves are Facebook. Your thieves are the social media whom you relate to. The games which you play online or on your mobile. The friends who call you and waste your time for uh, hours together, whether it's a boyfriend or a girlfriend. Or a lot of distractions around you in terms of what's happening with, uh, you know, COVID. The social news, which you can't impact at all as students. Why you should get impacted by what's happening. By knowing about it is very different from by uh, distracted and getting impacted by it. If you can, please do social service. If you can't, don't waste your time. Lot many times, when you are not able to cope up with what's happening outside, it's important to look inward and become selfish to develop yourself. Now, it might look, whatever I'm saying today, might look very gospel for you. You may not like it, and you may not, you might think, what's what's so big deal about it? And let me tell you, what's so big deal about it? The day you pass out of that campus and outside of that gate of St. Joseph's, you will realize you're very, very, very alone. Not your parents, not your professors, not your friends will come for your help. Not even God, tell me. Not even God, let me tell you. You're so alone when you pass out from St. Joseph's and you're just outside of that gate in the shade of that tree which is there in front of your campus and you're waiting for your bus. You feel lonely because you did not prepare, you did not have any partners in terms of your skills, your knowledge, your certification, your additional networking or the hobby projects which you have done. I was I was I was from a place which is which was a sure shot much smaller village from the place all of you belong to. I know you come from uh, uh, a nearby village uh, uh, to come and study, but the village I used to come from had just about 12, 13,000 people or maybe 20,000 when I was a child 40 years back, 45 years back. I have to travel all the way. You don't have difficulty to travel. Yeah, some of you might be traveling. When you traveled in the bus, did you open a book? Did you read that article? Did you uh, browse that uh, latest article on the technology? Did you take some notes? Did you make your plan card? Did you make notes of the next class by relating to an article which you read? Did you ask those questions to your teachers that made their life miserable? You don't do it. So let me tell you, as a student, both in my graduate degree as well as in my postgraduate degree, my teachers used to hate me for a right reason. Because if the teacher is not well prepared, I will eat them raw. I'm not joking. I always prepared. Now, these days in IIMs, they call it as pre-reads. I never knew about pre-reads at all as a student. Nobody told me. Just that I knew this is a syllabus for that year. And I always made an attempt to read the, uh, uh, the lesson plan or the lesson of the next day well in advance, so that I come to the class by knowing and writing all my doubts on pencil, on my textbook, on my notebook. In this bargain, my communication skills improve. In this bargain, my ability to think improve. My intelligence, my intellectual capability improve. Today, you have many tools and techniques available for you to improve all this. That's why Leverage on small sized learning, e learning, work through the tools. You can do a Zoom call, Hangout calls, learn through people. 
be with those students who are good to you where you can build your capability the day you are with the students who are going to steal away your time they are not going to help you at all in the future so you know many times being there in the right place at the right time with the right people jis sang ke sath aap rahoge jis sang ke sath aap rahoge waise hi banoge the more you spend time with the people who can value add to your personality you being extremely selfish and you should be you will have a respectful view of the world when you pass out of that gate on st joseph's in this journey you might require some mentors your mentors could be your teachers i had two teachers and yesterday i was talking to my classmate that's me santosh kamath who's a big businessman in bangalore near the sat city bus stop he has a big showroom so i was coaching his son now i was helping his son to take up an appropriate course in commerce so we were all talking to each other both of us were talking and we were so gratified in terms of thanking two of our professors and coincidentally both of us rattled the name of the same professors mr emma prabhu who was a great teacher who used to teach arts and gigi prabhu who used to teach physics for me uh, they are they are mentors for me in my initial life so you should identify your mentors they could be your teachers your uncles your aunts or one of your parents or both the parent or your senior from the college many times when in doubt whether you are right or wrong those people will validate your decision so for you if you want to have a placement in a good company you want to identify the right course many people many many students ask me sir which are the right courses i should do in certification in electrical engineering have you made an attempt to talk to your professor ever have you gone through Uh, uh, you just google said best in class courses in electrical engineering you get tons of them why should you depend on somebody else just go to courser and say courses on electrical engineering courses on mechanical engineering employability in automobile industry employability in hotel industry you just go you get tons of courses what is important not knowing about what you should do what is important is after knowing what do you do about it which will help in terms of biting your teeth and completing that one page two page three page four page many times we get scared looking at 200 pages book but you get satisfied on a day you open a book read just two pages once you read these two pages make a notes of those two pages record by talking about the two pages which you read suddenly you realize oh ugly my voice has been or oh, my sentence construction was wrong let me tell you you may be a super intelligent student if you are not able to produce or produce what you uh, read or, or present yourself there is no point in being intelligent intelligence has to reflect in your communication skills many times my father used to tell when i used to close the room uh, in a small room which i had uh, when i was a student i used to stand in front of the the godrej cupboard you know, the steel cupboard which you have at home it had a full size mirror i used to practice speaking to myself let me tell you even now i practice before a session in fact for today's session i will sit and go through all the slides just to make sure what example i should give to you you can become a prime minister of india you can become a president of a country your ability to practice what you want to preach will go a long way it's important to focus on the means the methods the tools to reach the end the destination you can reach only when your ability to your ability to um practice 
use these tools from a regular basis. I want to give some examples of some examples of sports and games, and this has been my style. Uh, I think Satyendra and uh, Sangeeta Ma'am will not. Uh, uh, I feel they, they will not get bored. You know, this particular small child comes to the uh, swimming pool after that great iconic figure wins uh, the gold medal, and uh, and the person was Michael Phelps. And this child talks to him and talks to him for at length just to understand how will he really become so powerful in the art and the skill of swimming. And the same little boy stands next on the grid of, I think, 100 meters butterfly of, or one of the seg uh, segment of swimming competition in uh, 2016 Rio Olympics uh, wins a gold medal and Michael Phelps uh, wins a silver medal. His name is Joseph Stooling. Please read about him. Your method to madness to reach good score, ability to skill up well happens when you do it yourself. You start with one page, you start with one project, you start with one hour a day, you start with 10 minutes a day to start with. The more you do it, the better it would be. Focus on the means, not the end. You will get placement only when these means are in its place. I don't know whether you know about these great gentlemen who won. 36 times world championship and he has beaten his own record in pole vault. His name is Sergei Bubka of USSR those days. The benchmark for yourself is you yourself. There is no plan B. Don't fall back, fall forward. Look at learning paths. Consume your time, how to learn to learn. You should learn how to learn. As students, if you don't know, none of us will know. So remote learning is way of life for us in the future. It's going to be uh, uh, the reality of the world the so-called new normal which people are talking about is nothing but your ability to learn on the fly without being there in present uh, in front of people. You should do learn by doing. That's what I give example. You can learn from each other, collaborative learning, self-directed learning, having mentor and facilitator, all these things which I've covered. Many times, you know what I say, you know you want to do. But you can't do it. Lethargy helps you not to do it. So start small. Don't think big. Start small and then make big the utilization of time, people, resource, friends, thereby your ability to think big. By thinking big, sometimes we get scared. Sometimes we get frustrated. Think small. Think simple. Because simple is extremely complex. When you do simple things again and again, when you do simple things again and again, you become an expert in that area. You become an expert in that area. That's why when you go to that pan bida shop, when he makes that pan, you go again and again to that pan bida shop because he's doing that simple activity of, you know, creating pans for the customers again and again. For a period of time, he got the right skill, right mix of content which goes in. Similarly, team as students. You know, I still remember how did I learn this language called English. I was not uh, a convent student like Sangeeta Ma'am. I came from a vernacular medium or Satyendra Bhattu came from an English medium. 
for me uh, you know going through uh, bbc news was a way of life again daily day in day out day in day out listening to harsha bhokle was a passion so what i'm trying to impress here is whether it is skill whether it is specialization whether it is your school project whether it is your uh, um, hobby project do it again and again you become an expert it's good to be an expert in one field or two field or three three fields you keep expertise of two or three and have a breadth of knowledge of all it's important to have it that way i don't want to spend more time on uh, other things um, i just want to stop here i'll see whether there are any questions we have another 12 minutes for question and answers you can use your chat room for your question and answers uh, i'm more than happy to answer any questions you have um, you can just type your question uh, this is me i'm also sharing i'm also sharing with you my personal email id so that all of you can see that on your chat room please feel free to ask me any questions you can embarrass me by the way you have the full freedom i i am one of you from the same place so please don't hesitate please ask me any questions which you have and uh, uh, would like to answer them any questions team you can unmute and ask you can type your questions don't hesitate don't think uh, i will feel bad about it i will not if you can't speak just type your question okay there are no questions all right so in that case i will i will i will tell you few more things which will help you in life uh this is my favorite slide which i want to uh, uh you know give you and share it with you many times team skill is hands on skill is hands on you can build a skill only by doing it you can build a skill by reading about it and putting it into, into action likewise there is a component called will your attitude has to be groomed you know what is an attitude attitude is in spite of you being the world class artist on the performing day just spending 2 to 3 hours in the green room preparing for that performance that day in spite of you being a great artist of the world that's an attitude attitude is knowing yourself there is something else which i don't know and i want to shape up my career on that's an attitude attitude is i failed two times in my particular project or in my subjects attitude is to be the best in class and scoring uh, uh, being a topper in the class and you know, i've gone through that phase in mathematics you know having how poorly performing and including i think i failed once in mathematics in my uh, graduate degree uh, and becoming a topper in the college uh, uh, i think in uh, in the last year if i'm not wrong so many times failures uh gives you the right opportunity to succeed the only danger there is you want to bounce back bounce back quicker if you don't bounce back quicker you might remain status quo now status quo is very dangerous you can fall down you can go up you should not be there where you are that's very very dangerous you know going down will help you to tell you that there is way to do things and i want to improve going up will tell you and this is not end of all so you should have 
good attitude. Talent takes you to a level, attitude takes you to the next level. Your knowledge is important. How do you learn that knowledge is important? How do you apply that knowledge into action is important. That's why I told about skill set building. And you should create this habit of, of generating energy in your, in your life, thereby picking up subjects, picking up certification, picking up knowledge from your friends, colleagues, and uh, your professors and teachers and uh, your nearby ecosystems is extremely important. That habit leads to your mindset. Mindset leads to a way of life triggered by thought, thought leading to actions. You have to have the thought first. If you don't have the thought, you can't do. So many times you have to spend a lot of time in correcting your thoughts. Should I go and waste the time on Facebook for next four or five hours talking to a girlfriend or a boyfriend for the next two hours? Or should I pick up something new from an university website? Price is yours because you anyway pay a price after a few years. Pay a price in terms of getting a good job or pay a price not getting a good job. You understand what I'm saying? So I think your, your, your talent followed by your attitude reflects in your behavior. Behavior will help you to enhance your skills. The right behavior, the output will help you to reflect on the input. So keep this in mind in terms of what you want to do in your life in the days to come. The more you spend some time on this, uh, the better it would be for you, given the fact that it is competition around. You know, in this age profile, I'll tell you, you will not care. You will have this don't care attitude, right? Engineer, Tala Apundi. You know, this kind of an attitude, you know. You know, this kind of an attitude. You know, you can't wait for something to happen. You have to determine what needs to be happening. You need to decide what, what needs to happen. So this is one um, thing I wanted to cover uh, since you had no question. You know, I like this, um, my last slide, uh, which I developed for my students. I always tell these two students, when I look at them, the more practice you become, the more the more world class you become. That's why in the practice sessions, all the sports people create world records. When you create world records in the practice session, then only in the real match, in the real event, sports and games, you'll be able to really generate those records. Practice is difficult, practice is very simple. That's why it is difficult. It's very simple, that's why it is difficult. It's contradictory, right? Anything which is simple, when you do it repetitively well, you become an expert. You know, take any habit, the reading habit, okay? Listening habit, speaking habit, Okay, skilling habit. Have you seen those, uh, you know, cycle repair shop boys and girls? These days, even girls do, right? Lot many times you find lot many uh, children or people who could not afford an education. They, they 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 do this kind of skilled work. Have you seen them? How quickly they can repair your bicycle? Just observe them. They have not got an engineering degree or a diploma or even. Uh, a basic education. Because they have been doing again and again, they have become extremely good at what they are doing. And this is well known. You know, unfortunately, this fact is well known. So practice makes you actually perfect. Simple is complex.
you know you 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 ask your friends you know who are artists ask them ask your friends who go to the gym tell them uh, whether the biceps and triceps will come automatically the biceps and triceps don't come very easily right it takes years to prepare three years four years without any artificial uh, vitamins uh, it takes ages so i think uh, you should develop these skills i call it as leadership skills because primarily it lead you to the way you want to be leadership doesn't mean you have to lead team leadership is developing yourself to lead your life for the future that's also a leadership skill how do you lead yourself for the future and the last two uh, you know statements it's primarily keeping you in mind i have written this okay so this team uh, i spent my time uh, since there was no question um, uh, we can i think it's 10:58 uh, uh, if you still have some questions i'm more than happy to share otherwise i, I think there is one question well, like, there is a question from a student okay, it's in the chat yeah. box yes so typically asking about students who are not great at academics um how do they really handle you know placements or campuses as such okay so team um if you have time to catch up please catch up with your time you may not have grades in your first two years or the third year you might have another two or three trimesters or semesters to follow catch up important if if at all you have time if you don't have time each one of us have multi skills in our abilities and are like you right identify what are the other skills you have in your life okay i've seen uh, that's why we call it as geek economy in geek economy what happens one might have speaking skills that's why he is a great rj one might have a guitar skill to play the guitar he can play guitar in a five star or he might have writing skills thereby he can become a content writer he might have a chalk painting skills or street painting skill like vilasthar you can become one or you might have um, an ability to do uh, mechanical uh, uh, repair you can start your repair shop i'm just saying if you don't have one you should ask yourself what you have and ask yourself are you spending time enough time to develop that further the point is whether it is academics or any skill you can't be ignoring them just because you are you are not good at academics your second skill your third skill your uh, uh, your other knowledge which you bring in are you developing them are you going to that mechanical workshop and standing there and seeing how they are doing are you going and standing next to a person or uh, calling that person or doing a video call with that person uh, 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 on that interest area which you have Let me tell you, I do it. I do it in my life, and I continue to do it. All my passions are continued, and today those passions have become my skills. To an extent, it has become my second profession or third profession. Now, uh, uh, you know, I might, I might look very pompous when I say that, but the fact is, each one of us have qualities beyond academics. The question you need to ask: Am I developing them? am i spending time to develop them am i taking help of people who have in them this particular skill which you want to develop uh, am i building that network i think you should have that quality and that's what i say buy borrow steal or build buy borrow steal or build this should be your aim in life either you buy that skill from someone so that 
you quickly learn. You borrow that skill, borrow in terms of their time, their resourcefulness, their abilities, or you build it yourself. Make, break, make, break, make, break. Thousand one time, the electrical electric bulb came into picture, right? All the scientists which you read in your life were very, very common people with some inquisitiveness, some ability to innovate themselves. Do you have that? Do you have fire in the belly? How do you create the fire in the belly? Go hungry one or two days, then you will know what is fire in the belly. Don't eat for two days. Don't drink water for three days. Just see what happens. You have to create that fire in the belly. Or you should learn from somebody who has the fire in the belly. You know, look at people and learn from them. You know, typical uh, personalities, right? Rahul Dravid is a great personality that way. I can relate to very well. Very focused. He will sleep at 10 o'clock. He will get up at 5. He will do the practice. He will read. He will uh, go through the videos. He will go to the net practice again. He will come back to the, uh, um, the you know restaurant for his dinner. He will eat, uh, drink only a soup in the night. See, entire building the caricature of building the personality called uh, a cricketer. It's holistic, right? That means you have to let go something. You have to embrace something. Whenever you don't have something, when you want to embrace something, you have to ideate, you have to idealize, you have to put your effort, you have to curse yourself, you have to uh, sit through some tough days and that is part of your life. The more you do it and learn about this now, the life license will become that much easier for you. The more you don't do about these things, the more you will do after you fail. But by that time, it will be too late to recover. It's like speed driving, right? The difference between speed and the rash driving, world of difference. You should know which one is right. Okay, I've given you a lot of very simple, easy to understand examples. So please write to me, please talk to me, please uh, identify with your doubts and questions. Uh, I've given you my email ID. Uh, you can see me in LinkedIn. Uh, but ultimately, the nucleus is you, not your teacher, your professor, college, placement, industry, leaders, managers, parents. No. Nucleus is you. Are you spending time to build that nucleus of you being at the center? And even at the cost of being selfish. Okay, team, thank you very much. Okay, Mr. Pravin, I think that was very, very insightful. In today's era, how do we really you know, uh, uh, challenge ourselves and get ready for the forthcoming uh, situation. And as you said, nucleus is each one of you, one of us rather, for us to get accommodated and scale up to the new heights. I appreciate and thank you so much for taking your time out, spending this morning with us and sharing your insightful thoughts with our esteemed students. I also like to thank Satyendra Bhatt sir for helping collaborate this webinar and uh, hosting it for us. Uh, Mr. Ragesh, be going there and for all the seamless work that you do for us by helping us host these webinars here. Um, uh, the, the least but not the last, but you know, the students, last but not the least, I am sorry for my verbal error. <laughs> the students who, who took out their time to participate, you must have gave information here and will make use of these, you know, uh, thoughts that has been shared uh, and uh, uh, hopefully help that, you know, it will, it will help you improve your future uh, aspirations as well. So thank you so much and look forward to meeting you soon, sir. Thank you. Thank you for being thank here you. with us this thank morning. You. Thank you very much.